job. So what's the PayPal designation? Uh, go to our website, n6na.org. There's a button that, you know, in the DIY radio group, you just click the button, it'll prompt you. Okay. Otherwise, things get lost in a hurry, Dave, so. All right, no problem. Hiroki. Hello. How's the squirrel zapper? <laughs> it's been working fine. I haven't killed any new squirrels. <laughs> no dead rodents? <clears throat> what a shame. <laughs> so, Hiroki, you're not the one that produces YouTube videos of squirrels being launched on baskets? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I'm not a YouTube program producer. I see. Oh, I see. That's it. This club's not for me. That's right. <laughs> you need a catapult, Roki, to get in the squirrel launching business. They work better. Oh, yeah. for, they work better for cats. <laughs> I've got a I'm catapult all in. launcher. If you ever go to put up an antenna, it works pretty good. I know the uh, our friend, the late uh, silent key friend, Dave uh, Dave Flack had one of those. <laughs> yeah, I've got kids it. love them. <laughs> it's not a tennis ball launcher though. This thing launches about two ounce lead weights, and you got to be careful. Oh my God! <laughs> that they don't get away weapon. from you. Yeah. I guess we ought to start the meeting. Right. 13 participants. I don't know why it keeps um, asking me about the waiting room. I have to admit people one at a time. Yeah, you can turn that off, Bob. Yeah, I'm sure. Somewhere. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I started recording, so uh, hopefully that'll work tonight. Um, and the plan for tonight is uh, to uh, have uh, Phil talk about the hardware, and then I'm going to talk about um, uploading software to the Arduino. Um, and Monday is our deadline for paying for a kit. And on Tuesday, we're going to order the parts. So just a reminder that the clock is ticking on that. So, And I'm signed up for only 40 minutes on here. <laughs> so uh, we ought to get going, I guess. So, uh, Phil, do you want to uh, take over? Yeah, let me uh, get my screen going here. I'll try screen share, see if this works. Host disabled participant screen sharing. So you're going to have to enable screen sharing. I did that just now. Okay, let's see how it goes. Oh, there we go. What I want is this one share. Okay, there's our board. I don't see it yet. Oh, now it's going out. It looks very good. You got it now? Yeah. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we've got our little encoder over here, and our little display and the 5351 and the nano. And then we've got our RF chain and our matching network. PR switch, swap the antenna between transmit and receive, bias supply, a little plug-in uh, power supply, and you plug your key in. I hate to admit it, but I made some mistakes on the board. The footprint for my little switch, instead of having a pin spacing of 100 thousandths, I selected pin spacing of 50 thousandths. And then I had some issues with my encoder. I had to do a little circuit hacking and a little SDASCL issue there as well. So anyhow, those things are all remedied. It uh, puts out a nice clean signal. I did discover that uh, 600 milliwatts is about what you're going to expect to get out of this thing. And um, they're ready to go. Does anybody got any questions about this thing? 
Looks good. Nice and tight. The board is five inches long in this plane, obviously, and it's 3.9 from here to here. It's not real compact simply because I didn't want anybody to go blind like me putting it together. So you got lots of space to work with. And um, as I said, it works, works fine. That's really all I have unless there's some questions. No, it looks good. I hope you chose different core material for each of the cores. No, they're I'm, all exactly. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I will do uh, once we get the pieces in, you know, these cores vary a little bit from production run to production run. So I, I will actually wind up, wind each of these cores and indicate what number of turns works best. You know, when you calculate them, you know, almost always end up with more inductance than you planned on. So I'll try and make it as simple as possible for all parties. Would it, be easier, that, Bob, I, would it be easier, Phil, if you gave us the inductance value you actually? It's on the drawing. Oh, You'll have all that information. All right. Peace. Not everybody's got an inductance meter that can measure these things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, actually, it's on the drawing. And it will be in a packet that I include that comes out all the little details. Here's an LCR meter that everyone can buy for like nine bucks. Yeah. 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 How accurate is it's it? It's actually pretty accurate. I checked it against my HP uh, impedance analyzer LCR meter. It's it's very very. It's good enough for what we do. Perfect. Yeah, I've got one of those too. Me yeah, I bought it just for the heck of it. I've got an AADE, if anybody knows what that is. Mm -hmm. Almost all digital, almost all digital electronics, I think is what it stood for. The fellow that designed that thing uh, is now a silent key. And then there's, Bob and I each have one of these Chinese equivalents. Mm -hmm. They both are pretty darn spot on within, I'd say, less than 1%. So in any event, that's all I have, guys, and uh, you'll have all that information, again, if there's any question. I, yeah. I have a question, uh, Phil. Uh, you said What's that, that uh, you had some issues on, on the board, and it looks like a couple of traces were cut. Uh, when we receive the boards, they will have been uh, gone as well? Or we... It'll be a whole new batch. You won't have to do anything. Oh, okay. Thanks. That's way too easy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> One of us is going to find a way to make it complicated. Well, that's that's the intent, you know. It's no fun if you don't sweat. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it back over to the boss. Looks good, Phil. Thank you. Okay. I would like to say that uh, uh, Phil's um, second attempt is this board, I think, with uh, KeyCAD, right, Phil? Number, I think that was number four. Oh, There's okay. a learning curve. <laughs> you didn't I used to use that. Eagle for okay. everything, and uh, there are differences, and you assume things, and it will bite you. Margaret, haven't seen you in forever. Hey, Phil. Are you having fun? I am having fun. Kind of quiet around here, though. <laughs> yeah, it is everywhere. We're all wearing masks. You'd think we were Zorro or something. That's right. So well, that's uh, seven, you got 17 now, Bob. Yeah, 17. I just admitted two more that were in the waiting room. So there's JoJo, the new treasurer. Hi, good evening. I'll see you in the morning. <clears throat> Yeah, tomorrow morning. So I have a question since we're still together. <clears throat> um, this is going to be a silly one, but I'm going to put myself out there. Um, why does it have a receive port on it? Because you hook your antenna to the transmitter, and when you're not transmitting, your receiver is plugged into the antenna. It switches the antenna between the transmitter and the receiver. 
makes your life a lot easier. Changing that connector oh. back and forth is kind of a pain. Oh, so what you're saying is you feed that that into your whatever you've got as a receiver, a separate receiver. Yes. And then you're um, able to receive without having a receiver on board. Right. Okay, because it's a transmitter only. But you know, if you were an old, old guy like me, Wilson, you'd remember the days when you had your own homemade, you know, knife switch, transmit receive yeah, yeah, yeah. switch, or <laughs> but this well, makes it well, way too easy. And those little, those switches, those coax switches are quite expensive now. They're 40 or $100 each. So yeah, and nice it's a to pain. This way it's real, it's a little simple little slide switch on, a, on that PC board that yeah. switches you back. Did you, forth. did you say, um last time that there was rf coupling there is you know anytime you have a source of rf and you have a sensitive receiver and they're anywhere within the plane without perfect shielding there's always a little bit of bleed through and so and I, you're saying you I might not even need a you. direct coupling to your receiver to get it if it's close you won't need a direct coupling you'll be able to the instant you hit the key you'll hear it on your receiver without having a connection well, your intent, remember, you're hooking your receiver to that same board. Right. And there's enough coupling between the traces and the board so that your receiver will act as your monitor. Uh, let, me, let me ask another, maybe a couple of questions. Uh, so we need to get a, a, a BNC uh, to PL259 adapter? Probably. This, okay. it's all it's all being it's a pretty busy night for me at six o'clock i was on a red cross zoom meeting at seven o'clock i turned into a river city arcs zoom meeting plus getting on the radio with you guys so good thing i get two hands and two ears true zoomy bob you better get started you're gonna run out of 40 minutes pretty quick yeah exactly okay. go ahead guys I'm going to try to share my screen here. Okay. Um, in order to get the code for the, uh, the Nano, the Arduino Nano, you go to arrl.org slash QST in depth. And then you go to um, year 2020. Scroll down to code listing for December, the Tunitin S, the bare bones synthesized QRPP transmitter. You click on code listing and it'll download um, a zip file that contains the code and a lot of um, photos and things and other information. So everybody should do that um, to get the code for the um, Arduino Nano. The other thing you should do is to go to arduino.cc slash en slash software. You'll see this screen and then for um, for your particular operating system, you need to download the Arduino IDE. Um, I clicked on Windows app to get the Windows version. You can also download for, for Mac or for Linux. So I'm not going to do that now because it takes like half an hour to get everything downloaded and installed. So I'm going to try to jump over to where I already have it installed. But that's the two things you need to do. Uh, whether you do that tonight or tomorrow or wherever, that's fine. Um, Bob, you, you did mention you're recording this. So can people come back and take a look at this if they need a, a little refresher? I think so. I also put it in the email, those, uh, those links. So um, for running the um, IDE, you need to create a folder called Tunatin S, wherever you put it. Um, and then you get into that folder. Somebody have a question? 
I'm not hearing it. Oh, your screen sharing is paused? It says here. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm still seeing your screen. Okay, I'll continue then. Okay, once you've got the IDE installed, you can double click on, on the INO file here. That's the code for the software that we need to upload to the Arduino Nano. So I'm double clicking on that to run the... Uh, see, I'm, I'm still seeing your Arduino IDE screen. Yeah, I think it paused. What happened? We're not seeing the IDE. Maybe stop and restart it again. Start the sharing again. Start the sharing again. Okay, just start. It looks like it just got stuck, like your, your mouse pointer, yeah, so it's not moving. Okay. Um, resume share. Oh, there's a thing here that says resume share. There you go. Can you see the Arduino IDE screen now? Yes. See your mouse moving. Okay, now can you see the, the code? No. No. Tuna 10 S code? It's all your browser. We're looking at your web browser. We're still at Arduino.cc. Great. You are Is screen sharing it. Shut it's that one down. Yeah. Stop Did you share? share the browser or share the desktop? Okay. I stopped the share. Now I'm going to share. There's the JoJo. Screen. Yes, I'm here. Uh, who was that? Are you there seeing? There you go. Hey, now we have it. Hey. You're there. Okay. All right. So this is the code that needs to be compiled and uploaded to the Arduino Nano. Arduino Nano is a computer, basically. So <clears throat> um, we need this development environment in order to get the code compiled and uploaded. Um, there isn't much that you have to do here. Um, you have a check mark here. And that will verify the program, is what they say over here. That's the same thing as compiling the code from this source code that the human beings can read and turn it into the code that, that can be read by the microprocessor. So I'm going to now, do when it, uh, a question. Uh, you said you create a folder called Tuna10S and you place, you're going to download this. Uh, source code into that folder? Yes, sir. And then compile it. And then compile it, yeah. The, the, the INO file. Do you file, have to load the libraries? Bob, do you have to load any libraries? You do, but that's later. I, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, have it fail here and then tell you how to do that. So let, let's try compiling it now. All I have to do is click this check mark in the upper left. And it says it's compiling sketch. The program is called a sketch in the Arduino world. They don't call it a program, they call it a sketch. <clears throat> so it's compiling now, and there's a status bar. There's a, a, a bar over here that shows us how far it's gotten at this point. And it runs fairly slowly on this computer. I don't have a microphone or a camera on my desktop that runs a lot faster. I think you need a new mouse in your hard drive. I don't know about that. But. <clears throat> it's about halfway done compiling at this point. <clears throat> While we wait, uh, the recording of this meeting is going to be available where? I don't know at this point. <laughs> It'll be the first time we've done it, so we'll, we'll have to figure out a I guess I'll put it out on DIY radio in the files area. Kevin's a man master at that. Put it on the, the club YouTube page. Okay, we can do that. Looks like we're about two thirds done.
Do you see JoJo's question there, Bob? I do not see any questions. Well, I'd like to find out if I should get this Arduino controller first. The, the Nano? Yeah. The, the kit, the kit that you're buying will contain an Arduino Nano. Oh. And how about the, what? How you know, about the LCD control. screen? The what? The screen that we're looking at? The LCD screen in the kit? Oh, that, that's part of the kit. All of that's part of the oh, kit. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. I think JoJo's in disbelief like me for $25. <laughs> we're, we're not out to make money here. In fact, no, I'm just saying it's a, lot, a, little it's a bit. lot for 25 bucks. It's a good deal. <laughs> hey, Joe Bob, Joe. you should have charged 100 bucks. <laughs> JoJo, it even includes the cable to plug in oh. your USB port and plug into the Nano. Then somebody's rethinking about ordering a 500 kit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this program has compiled at this point. Down at the bottom of the screen, it tells you that everything looks good. <laughs> We've got white on black. It tells you how many bytes are being used um, for this compile and so forth. Um, the next thing we need to do is to plug in <laughs> a nano, which I didn't do because uh, I was finishing dinner, <laughs> but I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to do an actual upload. So if it fails, <laughs> I'll be on camera, I guess. You actually won't see me doing this, but uh, you, plug, you plug a USB cable into the Nano and uh, into a computer uh, to supply, um, oops, wrong computer, <laughs> I have two of them here. Uh, the USB cable supplies power to the Nano and it also provides a communications path uh, from the inter in integrated uh, development environment over to the Nano. So anyway, um, So once we've compiled, I'm now going to upload it. So you click on the second button here, this arrow pointed to the right, and it says upload over here. And uh, then it should upload it to the Nano. And when you do that, it recompiles the sketch. Um, I don't think there's any way to get around that. Um, it, Actually, there is, Bob. Is there? Okay. What you do is you hit that button first, it'll compile and upload in one action. Right, yes, yes. Yeah. But since we've already hit, compi hit, compiled, all, all we really need to do is just upload it, but no, it's recompiled gonna always, it and now it's uploading. Yeah, it'll always recompile and upload. Usually I use that check button, Bob, to check for syntax errors on the right. sketch. Right, right, to verify the code, yeah, okay. yeah. Anyway, it's done uploading, um, and the Nano looks looks good. <laughs> You'll have to take my word for it. But anyway, that's all you really need to do. Um, you need to know that much. You need to have this environment, and you need a cable, and you need a Nano, and that'll get the code uploaded into the Nano, and you'll be ready to plug it into your board and, and make the transmitter come alive. Yeah. yeah. What about the going going away, Bob? Hey, Bob. Don't you yeah. have to load the libraries? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, I'm sorry. I thought I had killed the library before I started this. <laughs> but that's right. Um, I guess I reloaded it after killing it. But uh, anyway, um, under tools, there's manage libraries. Takes a while to load it up. Too damn slow on this computer. I, I will say this. 
loading those libraries is probably the most difficult part right. of the, this process. It really isn't so that it hard. Probably it has some good. issues there. Yes. But well, what we'll, it does we'll, is like we'll this find library, a way to get you some help. The library manager, the library manager connects to the internet to find this stuff. So. Um, what you do is you run the library manager from tools, manage libraries, and you'll get this screen. Then you put in Adafruit, a company called Adafruit. Um, I don't know why I'm getting a delay here, but okay. All right, guys. Okay. You hit enter, put in Adafruit, hit enter. It goes to Adafruit. Then you scroll down. If the thing will give me back the, <laughs> the, the ability to scroll. Yeah. Scroll down to Adafruit. Oops. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, I think okay. we will be building the kit in unison, everybody on Zoom and uh, working everything out uh, all together. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you scroll down to where it says Adafruit SI5351 library, and you should have a button over here that says install. Click install, and it'll install it, and then it'll tell you it's installed. And then once you've done that one, scroll down further to the SD1306. And you have a button that says install, you click install, and it'll install it, and it'll say installed. And so that's all you have to do for getting the libraries loaded. The two libraries we need are the two that are indicated right over here in the code. Include Adafruit underscore SI5351 and Adafruit underscore SSD1306. So there's that reminder. I intended to kill these libraries um, prior to doing this compile, and it would have stopped on each of those two to let you know that you needed to load those libraries. Are there any questions about that? The wire.h, I don't know if I missed anything, but is wire.h a library that's part of the build, uh, part of the IDE? You don't, it's a, um, you don't have to do anything to get that one. I don't know. Okay. okay. I think it's a standard thing. That's for the encoder, I think, or, or no, that's for the, the I2C. I squared C. I squared C, yeah, right. So the include files, the .h's that are there are part of the library? Because when I did it, I got uh, missing, missing files, so I'm missing something. Yes, yeah, you're, the .h's are included in each of those libraries. Okay. Yeah. Basically, that's it. <laughs> I can redo this and kill the libraries, I guess, and, and show you what happens if you fail to get the libraries loaded. I, I just did that. You get an error message that the H files aren't there. <laughs> yeah. I sure hope this is going on YouTube because. <laughs> oh, come on, John. There's going to be a test. <laughs> yeah, well, me and digital stuff, you know, I'm an analog close enough guy, but that doesn't work with uh, this kind of stuff. John, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need a reference. I, uh, Bob will probably work with Kevin on how to get this. This. Uh, Recording, we some, recording available. We could do some screenshots, like step by step. The only problem you're going to have, John, is is getting these two libraries loaded. And he went through it step by 
step with you, but that video will be extremely helpful. Yeah, when I'm doing it, I'm getting a, a version and install for each individual library. Is there an install capability? I just took the latest and that works. That was okay. All right, what? I'm, I'm not just getting two, I'm getting a large number, so I've not done this before. Hmm. By typing Adafruit. Oh, we've got to put the exact name. So it's like Adafruit space SI5351, and then it will appear in that list. And then the same for the other one. All right. If you, uh, so there's a bunch of, if you yeah, there's a bunch of Adafruit libraries. If you want the, the explicit ones that are listed like on those include lines. I would think, yeah, I would think so. Otherwise there's like hundreds of them. Yes. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just want those two Adafruit ones sure. to make this compile. And if you get errors, you can click on this bottom portion of the screen down below here where it has a log that's showing what's happening. You can click down there and you can do a control A and then you can do a control C and copy it and paste it into an email and send it off and we'll tell you what to do. I have a question. That would be, At which stage? Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. That would be better than having to verbalize everything that you're running into. <laughs> I'm saying click in the bottom screen, do control A, and that highlights everything in that bottom screen. It's a log of everything that went on, everything that went right and everything that went wrong in that log. And then you do control C to copy it, and then you can go and paste it into an email and send it off. We'll do our best to answer every question and get uh, everybody over the hump. I hate to bring this up, guys, but Mr. Mix is an absolute master of the C language. He eats and drinks this stuff, so you're not going to stump him with your problems. <laughs> the SSD 1306, there's actually two libraries. One is we're talking about mini OLED. I'm assuming that's the correct one. Yes. Does it matter which one? I picked the first one. I think the first one is, is something else, a monochrome display. And the next uh, one is uh, okay. The next one is something else. Maybe just installing them both. It would it would be overkill, but probably wouldn't matter. You you only need yeah, to okay. install still two, two the libraries. First one. So we're using a, min, a Wemos D1 Mini OLED, correct? Otherwise, there's two choices. As uh, there is, we. I'm not understanding the question myself, but. Oh uh, well, uh, I think Kevin and I are looking at the include files and getting an idea of what libraries are needed to be installed by the .h files that are listed there under include. Yeah, so the you, SI. I've been if you type, type in a search there, Bob, you could do your, um, uh, which one was it? The SSD 1306. SSD 1306, right. There's, there's two, two options that come up. There's a following thir Adafruit. I think there's a 1305 and a 1306. We have to go for the 1306. There's two 1306s. Depending on your display, yes. Okay. If you type SSD 1306 in there as well, narrow it down. Yeah. And you'll see Follow, two. Following Adafruit, put a space yeah. in, in what he's suggesting. Okay. Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah the, the plain, the plain ah, one is okay. the one you want. The plain one, not the Wemos Mini OLED. Okay, so Kevin okay. got it right. Okay. <laughs> that was a guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the how other you, one. How do you uninstall the library? Uh, there, you, I don't, you, you have a button to click to uninstall it, yeah. Uh, no. And then this is the one for the 5351, and there's only one choice there, so. Okay. Nailed that one. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> well, if you if you have two choices, you have a have a fifty percent chance of getting it wrong, right? As well as fifty percent chance of getting it right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's about it for me. And we will try to save the recording somewhere. And um, yeah, you also have to select the um, the Uno too, Bob. And when you first load the program, uh, when you first load the ID, yeah, that there is more to that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, let me tell you that. <laughs> uh, um, hang, too nice. Okay. Before you upload, you go to tools. Oh, I have to get out of here. Sorry. <clears throat> you have to choose the board. <clears throat> the Arduino Nano is the right one to choose right there. Then for the processor, you choose AT Mega 328P. <laughs> and then, uh, then for programmer, you want Arduino ISP. I'll put Can you go back a little bit to uh, AT Mega what? AT Mega 328P. Right? Top one. So you want that, you want that, and then you want for the programmer, you want Arduino ISP. I'll put this in writing and send out an email. And then. Uh, That's really poor, Dad. And then port is the other thing. I unplugged this cable, so I don't have a choice of a port, I guess. Yeah. And for port, you may have multiple serial ports and you have to click on a serial port. Once you've chosen all of those um, and go to upload, it'll tell you at least the down in the lower right hand corner, it'll tell you that you're trying to upload for an Arduino Nano and it tells what port. The other two things it doesn't show down in the lower right, but you can always look there to see if you've made the right choice. And don't worry, John, I'm going to write this up for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a little worried. <laughs> don't, be, don't be worried. <laughs> Three weeks later, I might have it working. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we can John, the hardest else. part of what I'm going to have you do is push a piece of wire through a donut. <laughs> well, I can that. <laughs> Making chloride. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions at this point? Uh, yes, I do have one. Uh, at which stage do we need you to let you know what band we, we prefer to have? We're going to give you the parts to do any of the three bands. Oh, okay. So you'll, you'll have all the capacitors you need, and then you just wind the toroids a di little differently, different number of turns on the different toroids. Okay. Thank you. All right. You know, Carol covered most of this. She said what you need to have is a soldering iron and some solder and a pair of dikes and some long nose pliers and a dummy load because you're going to need that to test it and a volt ohm meter because you want to set the amount of power this unit draws to a specific point. There's a little potentiometer to set it. And that's all you need. The rest of the stuff we've got handled for you. Well, you need eyeglasses and maybe a, uh, <laughs> uh, some other way of and, seeing better. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, my hands shake quite a bit. Would you put martini on the list of things? <laughs> so the, our plan is to order the parts um, next Tuesday. 
the deadline for paying is Monday. And on Tuesday, we're going to say, okay, this is it. We're cutting it off at this number of kits that we're going to put together. We'll order the parts on Tuesday. And then we have no idea when the parts will arrive or how fast we can get kits together. But hopefully within a month. Um, we have tested out ordering parts. We've gotten all the parts we've needed from different places in the US and China. And it's worked out for our trial runs. On the real one, it might be different. I don't know. I don't think that uh, Biden's going to ruin relations with China. They're going to still want to sell things to us. <laughs> I think we ended up with five or six vendors. Uh, yeah. It's all done. Yeah. All right. I think I'm done. Anybody else have a question? Do we still have a little bit of time? Yesterday, I asked at the, at the club uh, meeting, uh, completely out of, the, out of the subject, I asked uh, if anybody knew about uh, the conditions for uh, getting vaccinations. I did find in that information online today. So uh, I don't know if, uh, where would be the, anybody interested to know. What I basically did was just did a Google for Sacramento County vaccination. And, and uh, there is a place where you can register and log in. And uh, according to a relative of mine, within a few days, they got the appointment for the vaccine. I That's asked good. for an appointment on Friday, and they gave me at, at 12 o'clock Saturday an appointment at Kaiser on Morse Avenue. And I went and got my shot, my first shot, on Saturday. And, and you're in Sacramento County? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Neil, did you get the email? I sent you um, with the information. Yes, I sure did. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Good. It was good. Good response. <laughs> Any other questions? Phil, one of the guys, this guy here, called and asked for an appointment on Friday to get his shot, and they set him up for noon on. Saturday, and that's at Kaiser Morris. <laughs> that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. So, so Bob, what do you want to talk about in the next two weeks? Um, I think two weeks from now, we'll have a meeting. We'll just give you a status of how we're doing getting parts in. Um, until we have some parts, <laughs> I don't know that it would be good to talk about how to wind toroids or maybe not. Maybe that would be something we want to start with. But then you got to remember everything you heard when it's time to actually do it. So what do you think? I, I, I think from, from the assembly standpoint, that's the only piece that, that raises concern and it is so simple you can't believe it uh, and we can cover it more than once uh, what you just covered tonight bob is really really simple once you've done it but the first time you approach it is quite intimidating um, i noticed john had kind of a look of terror in his eyes when we were we were talking about it <laughs> But aside from that, this is really a straightforward little project and it, it'll be damned hard to go wrong. I'm, I'm thinking that when I get these kits put together, we get these kits put together, the easiest thing would be uh, to have you, you know, stop by my house out here in Fair Oaks and pick them up. You know, mm -hmm. one of you can pick up more than one, you know, we can do a little arranging, you know, proximity to one another. Um, Bob lives in an area that's a gated community and, you know, you got to get through the gate, the guard dogs, the, uh, the mace people and all that stuff. Sort of like trying to get to the White House. Is that right, Bob? <laughs> exactly, but... <laughs> Not exactly. I was thinking that, it, that I could meet people, you know, I'd go out to a library at noon, you know, and have a bunch of them and wait there for an hour reading a good book and then people would stop by and pick them up. That's another way to do it. 
we can we can finalize that. But again, the the issue we're dealing with now is just what time it takes to get stuff here. A lot of it comes from China, and um, you just never know. The boards actually have come through pretty quick, but some of the other stuff uh, there can be some delay. We've got two guys in the Bay Area, Dave uh, Crockett and or Crocker and uh, Hiroki. So um, I can mail those to them. You had some ideas about creating the cases by uh, printing them. Uh, that'll be later. Once we've got operating transmitters, we can worry about 3D printing. I, I can I print haven't, printed those. I haven't actually designed any 3D um, cases myself. I've gotten the STL files from somebody else, and I've gotten them printed. And I have a case on a watt meter that works just fine. So I have a great idea. How about a tuna tin? <laughs> yeah, a tuna tin. Print a tuna tin. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we call it Charlie? Charlie. Oh, no, don't call it feline. Charlie the tuna. You got to be old to remember that commercial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did look at an older version of this, and they were doing it on something about the size of a CD. Yeah. 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 This thing really doesn't need an enclosure. That's. That was the whole idea, make it as simple as possible. When you have enclosures, you got all kinds of issues with drilling holes in the right spot, how to mount things and all the rest of it. Well, the 3D, printer can, 3D printer can handle the holes. That's true. Yeah. We would put stuff in cigar boxes years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, or our, I have lots of cigar boxes. <laughs> this one won't fit in an Altoids tin unless there's an extra large Altoids tin out there. I can look into that. We <laughs> might have a jumbo sized. <laughs> <laughs> lots of bad breath running around. I can share the mints if you like. Too. <laughs> Tom probably wants to put his in a flamingo, right? <laughs> <laughs> It would it would add the decoration to the thing. I, that would be a nice antenna, but it's it's not a big enough for an eighty or forty uh, antenna. Yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, whoever got us done. Whoever can design the three D printed. In